grown up in Chicago. Uh, south, uh, south of Chicago, but yeah. I actually grew up in like a really, really small town uh, called Gardner. Uh, my town's population is like 1,500 people, so like less than a Corican, a sold out Corican. Sounds good. Yeah. I would need a, yeah, I need a. Was it always your dream to be a pro wrestler? Yeah, uh, f forever. I always remember my dad, he was always like, well, you, well, we'll see how you feel in, you know, 10 years when you're actually an adult, or even, you know, eight years. And he would always say, you know, well, you know, to be a pro wrestler, it's hard to make, to make it and to like make a living doing it. He knew the chances are were slim, so he would always try to be like, well, it's cool that you want to do that now <laughs> when you're 12, but you should think about, make sure you think about like um, a backup plan, you know, like you should make sure you go to school and just see that through and, you know, don't take like, you know, the chances of being a professor are so slim. And then I just never outgrew it. And then I was like 14 and 15 and I was still talking about it. And then my dad, really didn't know for sure, I think, that I was dead set on being a wrestler until I quit college and just showed up, like, back at home. I was sitting in um, a college class, like, economics, and I, uh, I didn't want to go to college right away. I wanted to be a wrestler in high school, like, and I would tell my guidance counselor and stuff, like, oh, I want to, you know, I, I don't want to go to college. I want to just try this pro wrestling thing, like, he would always be like, that's so silly. You don't need to do that. You're too smart. Because I was getting like all, a, like all A's and stuff. But I hated school. I didn't, I didn't want to do school. But I eventually went to college because I thought that was what I was supposed to do. You know? And I was sitting in that class and the teacher was just talking about like, I just remember like just being like, everything was like a blur. He was, he was just talking about like your future and um, you need to make the decisions start making decisions today that'll like shape where you're gonna go in your life and all that. And I'm just thinking like, I do not want a major in business administration. That is not me. I gotta get out of here. And I just packed up all my books <laughs> in my bag, left the class, walked back to my dorm room, called my friend, I was like, Chapman, we're out of here. I'm, I'm done, I quit. Can you give me a ride home? And I, we got to my house, I had all my stuff, walked in the door, my dad knew, you know, you come back with all, on a Wednesday night, I should be in class, I have all my bags, and he's like, hey, I'm like, hey, it's like, what's up? I'm like, Dude, dad, I'm done, I'm not doing college, I'm quitting, I don't care, I'll pay for it, whatever, I'm gonna be a pro wrestler, I gotta do it, I gotta do it, and he just looked at me, he was just like, I know, he did, and dude, Oh, anytime I think about that, I get like, like all worked up and like almost emotional because he just has always had my back. Like anytime, he's the best. Anytime I've ever had anything, he's just my support system. Yeah, he knew he knew I had to be a wrestler. He knew I had to. It was in my heart, and I'd been talking about it for ten years. So uh, I love that guy. He's just the best. So. Here's to you, Dad. Thank you for uh, letting me be a wrestler. <laughs> Ooh, I'm getting fu I'm getting emotional, <laughs> getting worked up. Ooh, about to cry a little. Oh, I love that guy so much. <laughs> that story just like brings a lot of feelings out of me. Cause he coulda, you know, he coulda gave me a hard time about it, but he never did. He always was had my uh, he was always in my corner. So. It's really cool. Some guys, you know, they don't they don't have that, but luckily my I got like the best dad in the world. So. Sorry. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Telling the story. Yeah, I don't know why it worked me up that. <laughs> Sorry, I feel like a little baby now. <laughs> but you, I'm sure you guys got people like that that just like love you no matter what. And that's what he is to me. So. <laughs> Why am I crying? I don't know. <laughs> what the hell?
Hello. You must be you? Juice's father. Yes. You I'm must be Juice's father. Yeah. We are New Japan World. Hello. Hi. Hello. Come on in. Nice to see you. You too. You too. Pleasure is mine. Good picture of Juice when he was young. Oh. He's the one on the left. And that's his brother on the right. He would like that picture. How old was he? Oh, I would say five. five yeah. Four or five, yeah. <laughs> one of my favorite pictures. Oh yeah, I always I let my kids do what what they need, you know. What they need to do is what they need to do. You always got the rest of your life to work. If you have to work, you have to work, which I did. And I have no problem with that, but he said, he always said, Dad, I don't want, I don't want just a job. I want a career in, in pro wrestling. All right, cool. <laughs> wow, wow, amazing. Wow. <laughs> our man cave. And that is when he was wrestling with NXT in Florida. He said, I got that. And this one was when he just started in uh, the Indies. That was up in Minnesota. He used to drive to Minnesota every weekend. It's like 10 hours, I think, something like that. He's had a little old car and he'd just drive it up there. <clears throat> you he put a lot of miles on that. This is when he came back. Yeah, return to the ring because he he had a uh, broken wrist before that. I think that's 2012. Yeah. How long does it take to um, make this room? Oh, yeah, it was a long time. Probably 10 years. It used to be a garage, and then. Joe decided he wanted his own room because we only have a two-bedroom house, so he just decided he wanted to live out here and put his bed out here. So that's how we first, that's how it first became not a garage. And then, uh, then his brother moved out here. And then when Joe moved away, then I said, all right, we're just going to make it into a man cave. So, and we just throw stuff down. Anything? I tell him anything you want to put up, put it up. We just. My dad really didn't know for sure. I think that I was dead set on being a wrestler until I quit college and just showed up, like back at home. <laughs> I was sitting in. Um... I love that guy. He's just the best. So, here's to you, Dad. Thank you for uh, letting me be a wrestler. <laughs> I'm getting, I'm getting emotional. Getting worked up. <laughs> Me Bunch too, bro. <clears throat> Love that guy so much. <laughs> that story just like brings a lot of things out of me. Cause he could have, you know, he could have gave me a hard time about it, but he never did. He always was at my, uh, he was always in my corner. So it's really cool. Some guys, you know, they don't, they don't have that, but luckily, my, I got like the best dad in the world. So. Uh, what can I say? Uh, <clears throat> yep, yeah, he made me a little emotional now. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, <laughs> that's silly. Getting a Kleenex. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's uh, Happy tears, that's wonderful, huh? Happy tears. Oh yeah, very happy. I think I need a beer. <laughs> <laughs>